A very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Lari Telang here from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology. This lecture is on TMJ imaging. The learning outcomes would be to explain the normal anatomy of the TMJ, list TMJ imaging techniques, discuss the indications of TMJ imaging and demonstrate the technique for TMJ imaging. So this is just to summarize the anatomy of the temporomandibular joint. Um, it's important to remember that the joint comprises of the head of the condyle and then part of the articular surface and the eminence and then there is an inter-articular inter disc which is a fibrocartilaginous structure. When it comes to clinical features of TMJ abnormalities, it must be first of all understood that the TMJ is an articulation between the glenoid fossa of the temporal bone and the condyle of the mandible. So dysfunction of the joint is the most common disorder and is most likely to manifest with pain in the TMJ or ear or both, headache, muscle tenderness, joint stiffness, clicking or other joint noises. Along with this, there could be reduced range of motion and locking and subluxation. So if the patient is presenting with any of these features, is generally categorized as dysfunction of the joint. To classify it further, Pain to palpation of the muscles of mastication and headache generally suggest a myofascial pain disorder. Clicking or popping sounds in the joint, locking or reduced range of motion indicate disc abnormalities. Crepitus and pain over the joint itself indicate arthritic involvement. In majority of the cases, signs and symptoms are transient and often treatment is patient reassurance and education alone. Less than 5% of the cases generally have severe dysfunction which require a thorough diagnostic workup including diagnostic imaging before treatment. Abnormalities of the TMJ can be classified as developmental abnormalities, soft tissue abnormalities, remodeling and arthritic conditions, trauma, ankylosis and tumors. So do, for performing diagnostic imaging of the TMJ, uh, it may be necessary to supplement it with clinical examination. It's important to understand that specifically for TMJ disorders, thorough clinical examination and arriving a diagnosis is utmost importance uh, before diagnosing uh, or diagnostic procedures are advised. So the application of diagnostic imaging in TMJ disorders would be primarily to look at osseous abnormalities, infections, in cases of history of trauma, significant dysfunction or alteration of range of motion or significant changes in occlusion. Again, it's important to remember that minor TMJ um, dysfunctions or um, alterations in range of motions do not really warrant diagnostic imaging. And both joints must be imaged for comparison. For osteous structures of TMJ, the imaging mortality that is preferred would be either panoramic imaging or more detailed uh, and higher uh, resolution images like CBCT or multi-detector CT images. Uh, whereas for soft tissue of the joints, it is best imaged with MRI, um, especially in conditions like disc displacement with TMJ, uh, pain or and dysfunction and to supplement osseous imaging in cases of neoplasm or infection. To look at the TMJ imaging techniques in a more detailed uh, form, if imaging techniques are generally classified into the os for the osseous structures and the soft tissue structures, panoramic CBCT and uh, multi-detector uh, CBCT are gen CT scan sorry, are generally useful for viewing the osseous structures. That means the bony part of the TMJ. Whereas soft tissue imaging is best done with the MRI. That means the disc and surrounding soft tissue area of the TM joint. So the indications or advantages for a panoramic would be because of its broad view to rule out any gross disease. As well as a good comparison of the left and the right sides can be done and the same in the same image. But the disadvantage of a panoramic image is that it does not give you any information of condylar position or function. Moreover, there are superimpositions from the base of the skull and other areas of the uh, head and neck area because of which there could be an uh, oblique distorted view of the TMJ that we are perceiving. When it comes to a CBCT scan, it is an excellent modality to view skeletal asymmetry, osseous deformities, ankylosis or neoplasm. 
The slices are thin and hence structures can be seen without any superimposition. But the disadvantages would be that sometimes metal objects can cause artifacts which can obscure the TMJ area. When it comes to a multi-detector CT scan, it is one of the best imaging modality to see the osseous structures, but you can also see some parts of the soft tissue at the same time. It is considered as a superior and additional imaging modality, um, especially when you're looking at neoplasm extending beyond osseous structures of the TMJ. Of course, the disadvantage would be higher radiation dose involved. When it comes to MRI, soft tissue contrast seen is the best, especially when we have to see the articular disc or joint effusion. The advantage of MRI is that there is no radiation involved, but of course it comes with its own set of disadvantages. The osseous structures are not as detailed and of course patients wearing pacemakers have a disadvantage with MRI as well as patients having claustrophobia. The conventional radiographs like the transcranial, transorbital and transpharyngeal views like the ones I've shown here have, are obsolete now and the panoramic view is primarily used to get a broad overview of anatomical structures of the TMJ. It is primarily, uh, a panoramic view can help to rule out gross disease like asymmetries, extensive erosion, neoplasm, fracture or large osteophytes. Minor details are um, <clears throat> difficult to delineate on panoramic view and it may be less reliable uh, to solely base your diagnosis on a panoramic view especially for the TMJ because it has thicker image layers and an oblique distorted view of the TMJ. This is an extension of the panoramic view uh, also with the same equipment which is called as a TMJ open and closed view which gives you an idea of the location of the TM joint when the jaw is open as well as when the jaw is closed. The CT scan of a TMJ again is uh, reserved for serious diseases like neoplasia of the TM joint and uh, can give a very good view of the osseous uh, component of the TMJ. CBCT scan also of the TM joint would be reserved for uh, uh, osseous component viewing of the TMJ where a disease process is suspected and uh, um, a clearer view of the joint is um, required. On the other hand, the MRI of the TMJ is specifically reserved to view the disc. Uh, this is a comparison of a normal disc on the MRI and a displaced disc. You can see the soft tissue component which is displaced anterior to the condyle, um, the bony condyle here. And this is the MRI view of a TM joint. Arthroscopy of the TMJ which is a procedure where injection of uh, or uh, you know injection of dye is done and uh, or you can view with an endoscopic view of the TMJ is less uh, opted these days um, and it is um, again a very painful procedure and a very skill uh, requiring or technique sensitive procedure. Arthrography is when dye is injected into the TM joint. Um, radio opaque dye is injected, it's contrast media to evaluate the joint space. Again, like I told you, it is of less significance these days and is more replaced by the MRI and CT images. That brings me to the end of this topic on TMJ imaging. Uh, the rest, uh, for more further reading, it is best to look up the uh, textbook for details. Thank you.